Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to create an employee JP entity. So let's go to our project in IntelliJ IDEA. And here, before creating the employee JP entity, let's quickly create a packaging structure for our Spring Boot application. So go to base package over here, right click, new and then choose package. Let's give package name as entity. Next, let us create one more new package. Let's call it as controller. Within a controller package, we keep all the Spring MUC controllers and within an entity package, we keep all the JP entities. Next, let's create one more package. Let's call it as repository. Within a repository package, we keep all the Spring Data JP repositories. Next, let's create one more package. Let's call it as service. Within a service package, we keep all the interface and classes that are related to service layer. Next, let's create one more package. Let's call it as DTO. Within DTO package, we keep all the DTO classes. Next, let us create one more package. Let's call it as exception. Within exception package, we keep all the custom exceptions. All right, so as of now, let us keep these packages. Next, go to entity package, right click on it, new and then choose Java class. Let us give class name as employee. All right, next, let us go ahead and let us add the instance variables to this class. So here private long ID and then private string first name and then private string last name and then private string email. Perfect. Next, let us go ahead and let us use Lombok annotations to reduce the boilerplate code. So here let us use add getter Lombok annotation to generate the getter methods for these instance variables. Next, let us use add setter Lombok annotation to generate a setter methods for these instance variables. Next, let us use add no argument constructor annotation to create a no argument constructor. Next, let us use add all args constructor to create a parameterized constructor. Okay, now we have created employee POJO class. Let us make this employee class as a JP entity by using JP annotations. So let us annotate this class with add entity annotation from jakarta.persistence package. Well, we use at entity annotation to specify a class as a JP entity. Next, let us annotate this class with at table annotation from jakarta.persistence package. Well, we use at table annotation to specify the table details. So here, let us use name attribute to specify the table name. So let us use table name as employees. Perfect. Next, let us configure the primary key for this employee entity. So here, let us annotate the id field with at id annotation so make sure that you choose id annotation from jakarta.persistence package next let us configure the primary key generation strategy for that let us use add generated value annotation and next add generated value annotation has a strategy attribute so here let us configure the primary key generation type so here let us use add entity so this identity primary key generation strategy basically uses database auto increment feature to automatically increment the primary key. Okay. Next, let us use add column annotation to map a database table column with a class field. For example, here, let us have a column mapping for this first name field. So let us annotate this first name field with add column annotation from jakarta.persistence package. And let us give the column name first underscore name so this column name will be mapped with the first name field okay perfect well if we don't specify add column annotation then by default jp will give the column name as field name okay but the column name like first underscore name makes sense that's why here we are using add column annotation to explicitly configure the column name for this field okay perfect next let us annotate last name field with add column annotation and let's give column name as last underscore name. Next, let us annotate email field with add column annotation and let us give a column name as email underscore id. Next, let us make this email underscore id column as a not null by using the label equal to false attribute and we can also make this email as a unique by using unique equal to true all right now we have created employee jp entity 
Next, let us run our Spring Boot application and let us see whether Hibernate will automatically create this employees table in a database or not. So let's go to main point class over here. From here, let us rerun the Spring Boot application. Well, look at here, there are no errors or exception in the console. It means our Spring Boot application is successfully connected to the MySQL server. So let's go to MySQL Workbench and let us refresh the schemas and expand this EMS expand tables and there we go. You can see employees table is successfully created. Next right click on this employees table select rows and let us verify the columns id email underscore id first name last name. Alright so this looks good. So let me recap what we have done in this lecture. We have created employee jp entity and we ran the Spring Boot application and we have seen that Hibernate is successfully created employees database table in a MySQL database. Alright great I will see you in the next lecture.